oh, I lost to a pusher. I got pushed to death. It was so ugly, but that's how they had to beat me. I just don't want to play like that. It's ugly. It's not tennis. I could go on and on and on. And you know, whenever clients come and tell me that they lost against a pusher, I'm always telling them, don't make the mental mistake, which you did by calling them a pusher by dismissing that game style. Because you know what? It's a legitimate way of playing tennis. They have a racket in their hand. They hit balls into the lines a lot. And at 3-0, 3-5, 4-0, you will play a lot of really defensive players that either moon ball outright, that may slice and dice, who are just really happy to run laterally back and forth, back and forth, back and forth for three hours, and they don't give you any freebies. So number one mistake in my mind is to dismiss that game style because, well, if you're now losing, you're going to be even more pissed off because, yeah, it's ugly. It is ugly. But you know what? Those players know what they can and cannot do. And most likely you fell exactly into the trap that they're setting, which is, well, they're baiting you to over hit, to do things that maybe you at 3-0, 3-5, cannot yet do. So here is how you actually beat really good defensive players. So what does a pusher do? Well, number one is they don't give you any free points. They're hardly ever missing. You have to make them miss. They don't give you a whole lot of pace. So a lot of times what looks to be really easy to play against, because they're really not having any forceful plays, any forceful balls, we tend to over hit. And again, it's 3-0, 3-5, A lot of us don't have the tactical and technical means quite yet to out hit somebody. So we're over committing. We're going for way too much and that's exactly what a pusher wants. In the background, you have MEP, the most exhausting player. And you see what he does. He slices and dices. He defends really well. He's happy to run right, left, right, left. He gives you another ball until you miss. So they're not giving you power. They're not giving you any free errors. So what you have to do is you need to make them do things that they don't want to do. Again, they're happy to just go right, left, right, left at the baseline. So most likely they don't have great volleys. So the first tactical measure is to bring in a pusher. You can do that in several ways. Either you hit an outright drop shot, which again, at the newer levels of tennis are maybe not necessarily quite set yet, quite mastered yet, or you just hit shorter and lower balls. So they have to come forward. Again, they love going right, left at the baseline and behind the baseline, but moving forward, maybe not so much. So you want to bring them in and then try not to panic, get the next ball again down to their feet. Because again, they may not be the greatest volleyers. All right, so Brian is nice enough to help me out to demonstrate here how to bring somebody in. So he's the typical pusher. He's just rolling the ball. All right, and I'm committing to working until I have the right ball. Oh, that's a little too short. Okay, so this might be an opportunity where I chip it short. He comes in, and as the typical pusher, he might not be as good at volleys. And also, Brian is a really great actor. I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Oh, I can move him a little bit. Here he's giving me a chance. And I chip it shorter. He doesn't know what to do. Brian being dramatic. Take one. Tactical measure number two is you come in. If you don't want to commit to long balls back behind the baseline, either outright moon balling or them slicing and dicing and you just struggling to react to whatever they're throwing at you, you need to come in. And you're doing a couple of things there. Number one is you force them to be more precise. Because another thing that pushers do, retrievers, great defensive players, is they're really happy to just go through the middle of the court. But by you coming in, you're shrinking the areas of the court that they have available. Even if you miss 
Some volleys are overhead. Stick with it for a while to see how they're reacting. Because that is another thing that a lot of players do when they play pushers. They come back to me and say, well, I tried everything. I served and volleyed, I drop shot it, I came in, I used swing volleys. They did it two, three times and then saw that, okay, maybe they're committing errors because yeah, it's not something that they're used to or comfortable with. And then they go back to wanting to over hit that pusher. Well, stick with eight tactics for a while, at least eight, nine, 10 points, two, three games. Because again, it's about putting constant pressure on the person who's just happy to sit back and get the ball back. So coming in is super essential. What are the opportunities to come in with? Could start with a weaker second serve. They hit a shorter second serve, hit the ball with good margin and make them pass you. That is your one chance to come in or you come in out of a rally. And here's a really good tip. Don't come in with just about anything. You still have to structure the points, but you want to have both of your feet inside the baseline because that allows you to take time away from them and again, put pressure on them and you have a better chance to get into a good first volley position. Two bright examples here of coming in when the ball is short. So both times, feet are inside the court and Malstrom here in the foreground attacks and makes life really difficult for MEP. Another great way to come in is kind of sneaking in behind a high moon ball that you are hitting. So if you're playing a moon baller, you have these long exchanges high over the net. And at some point, again, we get totally bored, we get frustrated, we want to hit a winner, and maybe again, we are not quite there yet in our development as a player. So here's a great measure. If they hit a moon ball, you're moon balling the ball back and you're waiting for a few cues. The cues are they turn away from the court. A lot of times you will see their entire head turn away because they have to actually, yeah, look at their contact point. They're moving further back behind the baseline. They are completely turned away from the court. And what that tells you is that you sneak in and you can take a swing volley. So let me show you what I mean. Now, of course, the swing volley is very aggressive and it may not necessarily be something that you are comfortable with yet. But always, always, when you are using these tactical measures, you're building your future as a player. You're growing as a player. You're adding tools and weapons to your repertoire. And yes, it may still be that you're losing one or two matches, but down the road, if you develop those skills, well, you're then going to make it look easy playing against somebody who's just happy to sit back and roll the ball back. So here's your typical moon ball rally. Okay. So he's initiating this. Oh, that's a really good ball. He's moon balling. All right, I'm moon balling it back. Nope, not good enough. Oh, that's a good one. Now I'm coming in. And take a swing volley. Or I could have used a regular volley. The cues were Brian had to move backwards and I saw his head turn away from the court and focus more on his backhand rather than what I was doing. All right, so we are in our moon ball rally. Oh, this might be an opportunity for me to heavily roll it. Okay, yeah, I'm going. And once you see that he's about to roll another ball, right? He's not gonna step into it with his body weight already going up to the ball. He's more happy to be off his back foot. That's when I'm going, that's when I'm committing. And even if you make a couple of mistakes, that tells him that he can't just rally the ball through the middle into no man's land. He has to be a little bit more precise. Well, here's another way to come in. Throw in serve and volley every now and then. I know, I know, I know you've never played serve and volley and you're not comfortable with it. Well, against a pusher, pusher, you'll probably have to try things 
that you're not comfortable with. So again, throw it in every now and then just to get them something to think about. So hit your serve and get in there because it takes time away from them. It gives them a different view. Is it comfortable for you? No, probably not. But it's also a lot less comfortable for them. Okay, recap how to beat a great defensive player, AKA formerly known as the pusher. Number one, it's going to be a battle of the wills because, hey, they're going to be set in what they want to do. They know they can play three, four hours. And literally, I've seen matches three, four hours long. Commit to it. It's going to be ugly, but it's going to be great for you and your development as a player. And you're coming in. You put pressure on them relentlessly, either by trying to maintain a more aggressive court positioning, meaning closer to the baseline. And that means, yes, dropping back for higher balls, but then moving up to make use of the shorter balls. They will come. Nobody at 303540 will play every ball within a couple of inches of the baseline. So you got to be ready when you have the chance to come in, either out of a rally, both of your feet are inside the baseline, that's a great cue, rolling a moon ball back and attacking them when they're retreating, attacking a weaker second serve, or even throwing in some serve and volley. And then of course, bringing them in. Make them hit volleys. And you know what? You will beat these players if you commit to working on these things. Yes, working on these things in matches and risking to lose a little bit. But in the long run, you'll beat them.